Hello, Pokemon trainers! Welcome back to another Pokemon Sun and Moon video on Asarly TV. Today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for taking on the Battle Tree in Pokemon Sun and Moon. The Battle Tree is the uh, battling facility that is unlocked after you beat the game. And it's very similar to things like the Battle Mason and the Battle Tower in previous games, where you just run through sequences of battles and you rack up some battle points to buy rare items and powerful items and things like that. I think I found a team that's working really well for me, so I'm going to share those tips with you. Pokemon that have worked really well for me, and maybe Pokemon that could work in theory. I'm just going to go through maybe six or seven different Pokemon that I think could work really well. Starting with my team, and then maybe I'll run you through kind of a test battle in the battle tree, just to kind of show you how the team works. So I'm currently at a 51 win streak. That's the best I've had so far in super singles. By the way, this is super singles only. I might do a more in-depth battle tree video going over like what to expect and things like that and different types of trainers, but I'm, I'm trying to make a kind of quicker video here just to show you my team. Let's start with Mega Salamence. Mega Salamence has been insanely good for me. Just so good. It's the Pokemon that I lead with. I start with it in the front. And it's holding the Salamenceite, so obviously it's going to Mega Evolve into Salamence, or Mega Salamence, sorry. It's a Jolly Nature. I am running perfect IVs and, and the maximum EVs on all of them, so if you're able to do that for your Pokemon, this is going to help you immensely. But I do highly recommend leading with Mega Salamence, because most of the time what I do is the first turn I just Mega Evolve and click Double Edge. Because of Mega Salamence's Aerolate ability, it changes any normal type moves into flying type moves, so it's basically as powerful as Brave Bird once you Mega Evolve. The two most important moves on this set are Double Edge and Earthquake. Double Edge, again, it just hits everything super, super hard. Mega Salamence is just so powerful, and if, if the Pokemon you're facing against is weak to flying or does not resist flying, it's going to take a lot of damage. And then Earthquake is there for just about everything that, that resists flying really easily, things like Bastiodon, Agron, uh, other rock types and steel types. It'll deal a lot of damage. The Pokemon that this set has a lot of trouble with are things like Bronzong and Skarmory because they're steel types that can easily take Double Edge or Dragon Claw and they don't take any damage from Earthquake. So those are going to be the most problematic ones to run into. But I, I definitely say that Double Edge and Earthquake are absolutely the most important moves on this set. They're going to be dealing a ton of damage and you might in the early stages of the battle tree, you're just going to be winning games with Salamence alone, just by spamming Double Edge and killing everything that you run into. And then as as it goes later on in the battle tree, it's going to be a little more tricky than just spam Double Edge. And then Dragon Dance is there to you know boost your power. I, I rarely have used Dragon Dance though, honestly. Double Edge and Earthquake have been perfect for me. I only use Dragon Claw against something like other dragon types. That's really the only time I ever use Dragon Claw is when I'm facing another dragon. And even then, I could probably just use Double Edge as well. So Dragon Claw is a pretty disposable move. So is Dragon Dance. Other moves that could help here are Protect, Roost, Fire Fang, um, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, things like that. But again, Double Edge and Earthquake are really probably all you need. And then the last two moves are there just to kind of help you out. So Mega Salamence, absolutely an all-star. I highly recommend using it in the battle tree if you've been looking for a Pokemon to, to give you an easier time in the battle tree. The next Pokemon on my team is Kartana. This is a Ultra Beast. Ultra Beasts are allowed in the battle tree. And uh, this one is a naive nature. I, I wasn't able to capture a jolly one, so this is going to boost its speed and lower its special defense. And uh, that's fine, because Kartana already has very, very bad special defense. And so, um, basically, Kartana is there as a backup sweeper for Salamence. So, if there's anything that Salamence isn't able to handle, if Salamence, you know, goes down somehow, Kartana is an, a nice kind of backup that can help me kind of continually sweep, hopefully. With Kartana, um, I mean, with Beast Boost, it just it just annihilates things. Like, if Salamence is able to weaken something and then Salamence dies, Kartana can come in and just basically clean up from there. It's pretty fast. Um, it's not as fast as Mega Salamence, but it's decently fast on its own. It doesn't outspeed things like Gengar or, you know, certain other things, Jolteon. There are, there are a few things that outspeed Kartana, but most things... 
Kartana will be outspeeding and killing with like Leaf Blade or S Sacred Sword or Smart Strike. I highly recommend those first three moves. You want the Leaf Blade because it's a really powerful move and you're a Grass type. Sacred Sword gives you really, really nice coverage. And then Smart Strike is Stab, but also Smart Strike will never miss. And you will find as you get later in the battle tree that there will be trainers that use Double Team, that use Bright Powder. They, they use a lot of strategies that boost their Pokemon's evasion, which means your moves are more likely to miss. It gets really, really annoying. And so to avoid things like that happening, just run Smart Strike, just so that you have a move that's always going to hit, no matter what. The last move I have, Aerial Ace, because I added Aerial Ace and I was thinking, oh, well, I want a move that's always going to hit, that, that'll never miss for those annoying hacks. But then I remembered that Smart Strike basically does that as well. Aerial Ace is easily replaced by something like Night Slash. I highly recommend Night Slash, because Night Slash rounds out the coverage really nicely, and uh, it, it, it's also a fairly powerful move, so... I would recommend switching out Aerial Ace for Night Slash. You could have Aerial Ace. There have been a couple rare instances where Aerial Ace has been useful, like maybe against bulky grass types or something like that. But for the most part, Leaf Blade, Sacred Sword, and Smart Strike are all you really need. And then finally, after Kartana... Well, with well, one, one last kind of point about Kartana is that, again, it's really fast and it hits really, really hard. And with Beast Boost, you just you just kind of snowball from there. Like, if you send in Kartana and you finish off a Pokemon, you'll get a Beast Boost. It'll boost your attack. And then the next Pokemon they come in is just more likely to get one hit KO'd because you have a Life Orb, you have a really high attack stat, and you have a Beast Boost from killing a previous Pokemon. So once that happens, then, you know, it's more likely you're just going to kill the next thing. And if you kill the next thing, then you're probably very likely to one hit KO the, the following thing as well because you're just going to have such a massive attack stat that things are not going to be able to switch into. So Kartana is just kind of like a snowball effect. It is, again, it can be outsped by things like Greninja. I have actually encountered problems with Greninja, so be careful there. Um, I have encountered problems with Mega Alakazam, who's also insanely fast. So just be wary if you are going to run this team. Um, just know that, you know, speed is not the absolute best trait of this team. At the same time, though, the speed of this team is pretty solid. Like, you will be outspeeding most things. Finally, the third Pokemon that I've been using that has really, really helped me get to 50 wins in the battle tree is my Toxapex. Um, for this one, I'm using, um, you know, pretty standard stuff here. It's bold. It's, it's holding leftovers. You could also hold Black Sludge if you have that. Black Sludge is basically leftovers that only po poison types can hold. And then as for moves, we have Baneful Bunker, which is Toxapex's exclusive move, which is essentially Protect. But if the opponent makes physical contact with you while you're using Baneful Bunker, they will get poisoned. So it's basically protect, um, but it does learn it through level up, so you will you probably want to teach it that anyway. Toxic is extremely important because this Toxapex, if you'll notice, it's not very strong. It's extremely bulky, that's what it is. And that's the purpose of this Pokemon, is just to have a Pokemon that can take hits insanely well, that can kind of round out the synergy with, with Salamence and Kartana, and it can take on Salamence's Ice-type weakness, it can take on Kartana's Fire-type weakness, and its Fighting-type weakness, and it just it can just take hits all day long. It's insanely good, and even though it sounds weird, because normally in the Battle Tree, you want Pokemon that are just really aggressive, that can just hit really hard and finish the game quickly, but I think it's nice to have a different element here with, Car with uh, Toxapex that kind of switches gears. So we can win by stalling things out, by going for Toxic, poisoning them, and then just spamming Baneful Bunker to rack up some toxic damage, then spamming Recover to, you know, re recover our health as they're continuously getting damage from the toxic. So, um, very, very useful, of course. Toxapex is going to have a hard time against other poison types and steel types because they cannot be poisoned, but in that case, you can probably just spam Scald until you burn them and just stall them out that way. That is the purpose of Toxapex, is just to wear the opponent down and it's been very, very successful for me. Before this, I was using Salamence and Kartana on teams with something like Tapu Koko, Zerkatry, Tapu Lele. Just really powerful offensive Pokemon that rounded out the special attacking side. And I found that sometimes I would just encounter a team with a really, really bulky Pokemon. A really annoying setup Pokemon that could set up, you know, double teams or annoying stuff like that. Or even just super fast Pokemon that were able to outspeed both Salamence and Kartana. 
And those teams posed big problems for me because I had three powerful offensive Pokemon. And while in the early stages of the battle tree, it was kind of easy to, to destroy teams with just these super powerful Pokemon. Later on, when the strategies got a little more advanced, more complex, it was harder to just, you know, spam Double Edge or try to sweep with Kartana in the end. And so when I tried Toxapex, it actually really helped me out because there were games where I could switch Toxapex into a, a powerful attacker or like a, an annoying stally Pokemon and I could take hits easily and then I could just put, put them or make them poison with Toxic and then again just kind of wear them down by spamming Protect. They take some damage, then the next turn I'll go for Recover, they'll take a little bit more damage, and I just keep switching between those moves, and then if it's an easy Pokemon like Suicune, who I completely wall, if they're poisoned, I can just keep spamming Scald just to get that residual damage going. And so Toxapex has just been a, a, a blessing for me in this type of team. And I do think that if you are trying to challenge the Battle Tree, I think that you should probably... Have a team that has some variation to it. So again, just not just a team that's all sweepers or not just a team that's all bulky Pokemon. I remember in the Battle Mason in in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, one of the best teams for me that got me hundreds of wins was Mega Kangaskhan, Gliscor, Toxic Skull, Toxic Stall, Gliscor, and then Chansey. So I had two Stally Pokemon on the team, and then I had Mega Kangaskhan, who was an extremely powerful Pokemon at the time. And that was able to allow me to kind of win the game, um, win a lot of games very easily. And so maybe you could try something like that here. Maybe you can try something like Mega Salamence, Toxapex, and then another kind of stally, bulky Pokemon that can wear teams down that covers Toxapex's weaknesses. Because Toxapex is weak to ground, it's weak to electric, and if you're up against... I mean, Toxapex can take hits really, really well. However, if you're up against a really powerful electric type or a really powerful ground type it's going to be difficult for Toxapex to take those hits so just try to kind of construct your team nicely but again this is the team that has worked for me and that is again Salamence, Kartana, and Toxapex so if you want an example of a team that has done well for someone else this team has performed exceptionally well for me and I, I definitely recommend this team if you're able to get these Pokemon with these natures and these abilities and whatnot. So like I said, now I'm going to look at a couple other Pokemon that could work really well for you. And uh, I'll, I'll try to go through this fairly quickly. But these are things that have worked pretty well for me. And, you know, I, I say that if you want to try something like these out, any combination of these Pokemon, as long as you have a good mix of physical attackers, special attackers, and maybe some bulk, could work. So the first one is Tapu Koko. I haven't used the Jolly one yet. Sorry, that I got that one in a trade. Uh, this is a Rash one, which boosts special attack and lowers special defense. I found this to be very good. Unfortunately, with this nature, Tapu Koko does outspeed things like Gengar and some other important things like that. However, it does not outspeed certain things that it would outspeed if it had a, a speed boosting nature like, like Jolly or Timid or Naive. So, if you want more speed on Tapu Koko, you can, you can go for that. Um, I, I opted for more power here. It's holding an amulet coin, but that's, I mean, ignore that. I, I was using it for a battle, but, like, for an in-game battle. But I was holding choice specs when I was in the battle tree. Uh, I mean, Brave Bird is interesting. Tapu Koko's move pool is just so limited, but electric terrain boosted Thunderbolts are just so good. It cannot be put to sleep because of electric terrain, so that's really useful because I, I encountered an annoying... Hypnosis Gengar and there are a few Pokemon on the battle tree that you will encounter that try to put you to sleep and When you get put to sleep, they're gonna do a whole bunch of annoying things to you like Dream Eater Nightmare or they're just gonna start setting up double edges behind a substitute So you don't want to be put to sleep. So if you found that Sleep Pokemon are really annoying for you Tapu Koko is an option Although I did try Tapu Koko before and I, I did not make it to 50 wins on my team I've been using Mega Salamence since the beginning though, so that's my mainstay. Um, but Tapu Koko, again, just a decent option. Uh, next we have Porygon Z with the Normalium Z Crystal. And so what that does is you'll notice he has the conversion move. And that's actually really cool because what it does, Z conversion, which is the conversion boosted Z move or whatever, uh, or the Z move boosted conversion, whatever, um, is it changes his type to the the type of the move at the top of his list so since the move at the top of his list is shadow ball he will become a ghost type after using z conversion 
And in addition to that, Z conversion boosts all of his stats by one stage. So he's able to pretty much sweep from there. So I would recommend Porygon Z. I mean, I, I have the download ability. I've heard that the adaptability ability is probably better. So I might rebreed to find an adaptability Porygon. But aside from that, I mean, this is this is what I've got going on right now, and this has been working for me. Um, I did, you know, again, put Porygon aside just to move Toxapex onto my team, but when I was using Porygon, it was decent. It was better than Tabu Coco, I would say, but you need to find an opportunity to set up the Z conversion. Okay, this Pokemon is one that a lot of people online have been having success with, and I bred one myself, and I raised it, and it just, it, it didn't really perform as well for me as I, as I would have liked. It was holding the item Wide Lens, which boosts its accuracy of its moves by 10%, which means that your play rough is going to be 99% accurate rather than 90, and that's actually pretty useful because sometimes play rough will miss, and you want your really powerful fairy type move to deal a lot of damage, and if play rough misses, then you, you wasted a turn, right? Mimikyu is very good because of its disguise ability. What that means is that when it takes a hit, the first time it takes a hit in a battle, it doesn't take any damage and its disguise is broken and then after that anytime it takes a hit in battle it'll it'll take damage but it, gi it gives it a free attack and so usually I like setting up a swords dance for free and then just attacking with whatever move is, is suitable for the opposing Pokemon the problem with Mimikyu is it can still be put to sleep it can still be burned it can still be you know paralyzed all of that and it's not super fast it's not nearly as fast as something like Tapu Koko or Salamence for that matter, so um, you kind of find some awkward situations where Mimikyu is just not fast enough, even though Shadow Sneak is pretty powerful and can, you know, deal a decent amount of damage at plus two. Uh, so Mimikyu has worked for a lot of people. For me, I used it once and I didn't really care for it, and I ended up switching it out for Kartana, who I found was better. So just keep that in mind. You can try Mimikyu, it might be really nice for you, but it didn't really work for me. And then the last thing I want to look at is a gimmicky Pokemon that I that I tried, and it was okay for me as well. This is Minior, and with the Shield's Down ability, it's actually really good because it cannot be status. So it cannot be put to sleep, it cannot be burned, it cannot be paralyzed when it's in its, its Shield form. And what you do is you set up a Shell Smash, and then the White Herb activates, which restores the lowered defense and lowered special defense. And then you can sweep from there, and then if, it, if they take you down to lower than 50% of your health, then your sh your shield breaks and you become very powerful and you can from there you can sweep with acrobatics stone edge or earthquake decent coverage uh this thing again it worked okay for me i i did want to try it out i felt like it kind of was annoying because i had to always set up with shell smash otherwise it wouldn't really do as much damage so it's it's i feel like it's in some ways inferior to salamence whereas salamence has that power outright like salamence is just able to do so much damage from the get-go you don't need to click dragon dance you don't need to click anything else mini or on the other hand you do need to set up a shell smash and that usually takes a turn sometimes they're able to do annoying things that can stop you sometimes though i mean sometimes you will get an easy team and you'll be able to sweep through them after one or two shell smashes but aside from that i mean just mini or is interesting to try it i would say it's worth trying for yourself so those are some Pokemon that I think you could try in the battle tree that could bring you some success. So hopefully this has helped. I'm going to now give you a little bit of a demonstration through the battle tree, just showing you how this team works. So I'm on battle number 50, f sorry, 51. My last battle was against Red, who's the battle legend. And that one was, was decent. Young Master Scarecrow, yes. Something else that's worth noting about the battle tree is that in between each battle, after you win, you can take a break. And it takes you out of the battle tree and you can save the game, you can go do whatever you want in the game. And something that's really useful here is that if you take a break, when you go back, you can actually choose a completely different team. So if you want to start the early stages of the battle tree with just really powerful Pokemon like Mega Ments and stuff like that, and then get through like 30-ish wins, maybe 40 wins, and then take a break, and then when you come back, you can try like a more technical strategy or a more synergistic strategy. That can work as well. So let's go ahead, and I'm just gonna choose the team that I told you I used. Well, you can't see the bottom screen there, but it's Salamence, Kartana, and Toxapex. And yes, we will save the adventure. 
All right, battle number 51. Let's go through it. Okay, and we get a we get a person who's using legendaries on their team. So, this should be fun. This should be interesting. I hope I don't I hope I don't mess this up. All right, so we're going to like we always do. Oh, he gets defiant. Oh no. Okay. This could be very scary. I think I should be able to deal a lot of damage with Double Edge. Tornadus is pretty fast, but Mega Salamence is actually faster. So uh, I think Double Edge, I want to say it might kill, but we're, we're going to find out. This is a tough one. Yeah, and, and know that as you get later in the battle tree, there is a better chance that your opponents are going to have legendary Pokemon. And these can be from any region, even Pokemon that are not available in Alola. Okay, that was decent, but it did not kill, so... Okay, cool. He's using Air Slash from his weaker um, offensive stat, which means we are going to barely live. And I'm just going to go for the Dragon Claw. This is where Dragon Claw is useful because we're not going to take any recoil damage. So we are up now 3-2. to two, And that's a good place to be, especially against a person who uses Legendary. So if they have a Legendary Pokemon that Toxapex can wall, like Regice. Okay, huh. This is a big decision here. I can double edge and deal a lot of damage to Regice just to kind of pressure it into not doing anything stupid because if I switch into Toxapex there's a chance that they might just go for like double team but at the same time since Salamence is four times weak to ice I think the game will recognize that and it'll make the Regice use Ice Beam and so I think I kind of get a free switch into Toxapex here we'll find out right now Blizzard okay so I should take this really well see the people on the battle tree also use Blizzard a lot <laughs> even though it's not very accurate and and I found that out of like five blizzards that have been used against me in my 50 streak, four of them have hit. So just be careful. All right, we'll just go for toxic here. We're just gonna we're gonna show off. Oh no! Oh my goodness! Wow. Okay, well we're gonna show off what Toxapex can do. But wow. Okay, as soon as they hit that thunder, we are gonna be in trouble. I think we might be able to take it because Regice doesn't have too massive of a special attack, and it's not an electric type. So we're just going to keep spamming protect until we uh, until we can't anymore, I guess. Oh, man. All right, well, we're going to see firsthand what Toxapex can do. We're going to see how, how well it can do in this type of situation. I mean, don't get me wrong. This Thunder is going to be doing a lot of damage. And I think they're faster than I am, which means I can go for recover here. So I'm going to do that. So see how Toxic just deals gradual damage each turn fingers crossed here that we don't get blown away oh they're gonna go for thunder wave okay so i awkwardly went for uh recover here so it's annoying that we are paralyzed but if we never get fully par oh we just did <laughs> it's okay that wouldn't have mattered because we, we used recover there and i already had like full health so that didn't matter all right so see now we're gonna be able to go for baneful bunker again oh no oh no okay we're about to see here okay here we're gonna take the hit we're gonna take it I think we should be able to live. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We, we live perfectly. So that's the magic of Toxapex. Just so handy in taking hits from, from really powerful threats. And we're going to wear him down even more. And hopefully we don't get fully paralyzed here. Although now we are seeing that Thunder is not doing that much damage. I mean, we can't take multiple Thunders in a row. But as soon as we're not fully paralyzed, you know... We're going to be able to hopefully recover some health. But yeah, this is getting a little annoying. But again, the Regice is slowly, slowly dying. Oh yeah, so it'll die this next turn. So we can go for Protect here. Or Baneful Bunker. It's the same exact thing. Nice. We don't get fully paralyzed, which means we're going to get a little bit more recovery. And the Regice is going to go down. Which means my opponent will have one more Legendary Pokemon. And we have all three of our Pokemon remaining. Even though Toxapex and Salamence are really, really low on health. The, just the fact that we have all three of our Pokemon means that no matter what my opponent chooses, we we should have something that's going to be able to beat it one-on-one, -on -one at least. Cobali- Oh no, oh no, everyone. Okay, this is a nightmare for me. I faced a Cobalion in one of the previous rounds, and it was just a nightmare. It had Substitute, Iron Head, Swagger, and Psych Up. It was- Oh man. All right, well, we we got fully paralyzed again, and this thing went for Protect. That's a good sign, because that means it's not the same Cobalion that we faced. Okay, Close Combat, that's a good sign as well, because we can easily take a Close Combat, and it's going to lower its defenses, which means 
if Salamence has to come in to clean up, its Earthquake is going to be dealing a lot more damage. Alright, and it's Life Orb. Okay, so if we can burn this, then we should definitely be able to win. Okay, we don't burn it, but that's a decent amount of damage. Okay, cool. So I'm a little more confident about this, this matchup now. I was terrified when I saw the name Cobalion because we almost got swept by a Cobalion in Battle 49. And I was about to throw my stylus across the room. Alright, so yeah, he's just easily, just easily lowering his own defense. And when Salamence comes in, it's easily going to be able to just wipe it clean. Wipe it off the floor. Like the vermin that he is. <laughs> I have no sympathy for Cobalions anymore. Cobalion? Cobalion? I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Alright, so just a little more stall. And that's how it goes with Toxapex. But again, Toxapex, like you saw with that Regice, it'll just save you from some battles that you might not have been able to win otherwise. It's just such a great Pokemon. And I think it combos really nicely. And see, we're still taking hits for days. See, and at this point, I just don't care if, if Toxapex dies. If anything, I want Toxapex to die so that I can send in a more powerful Pokemon to finish the job. But this might even kill right here. Yeah, it does. Okay, awesome. Alright, so that's the team then. Um, I might do more of a run through the battle tree, like maybe if I get further and further on in the battle tree, I can kind of show a video of me just playing through it. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Let me know if you would like to see me play through the battle tree in real time. This was just more of a demonstration, and I'm kind of glad I got, I got paired against a legendary team, just so I could show how powerful my team comp composition actually is. So I hope this video helped you out. Please leave a like if you did enjoy and if it helped you out. And also, please subscribe for more Pokemon Sun and Moon content. We love doing guides. We love doing battle videos. We just love doing Pokemon content. Let me know in the comments what more you'd like to see. And let me know what your battle tree team is. Just so that we can kind of talk as a community. Maybe some people can borrow your sets. Or maybe you can get ideas of what other people are using in the battle tree to some success. This is my battle tree team. And I'd love to see yours. So let me know.